leaving in about a week to go hike about 600 miles on the Pacific Northwest Trail. Base weight is going to be about 6.5 pounds. So hiking in the summer really adds an opportunity to carry a lot less, I feel. Personally, I don't want to be a blueprint because there really is no right or wrong way. It's just whatever you enjoy. So let's get into it. I'm not actually gonna start with my backpack. My cell phone in my pocket, a little bit of headphones here. I am again going with uh, the Ultra Superiors and although they are not perfect, I still unfortunately haven't found that perfect shoe. They're okay, they're just not the best. Now for my backpack. On the outside here, I have my tent stakes, only five tent stakes, and these are the Z-Pax carbon fiber tent stakes. They stick into the ground real nice, but be careful. I actually did break one of these the other day, trying to press it in with my shoe. And for this trip, I am actually using the Palante Joey. It is a, a small, like, running style vest. It's a little bit different than the pack I had been using previously, just that it's smaller. And it's got these kind of, like, running vest style shoulder straps. On the outside, I have a little plastic peanut butter jar and a little plastic spoon. I just keep those together, and that's what I use to cold soak my meals. For this one, I'm using two of the cheapest water bottles I could possibly find. I like these water bottles. Uh, I've heard some sources say that 20 miles is the longest waterless stretch I'll encounter. And then I've heard other sources say that they only carried one water bottle for the entire thing and they didn't even keep it half full most of the time. So this is subject to change. Typically I also have a bunch of food in my side pocket. And then in the past, I would always keep all my food in the bottom pocket. But what I've been doing lately is actually keeping my camera in the bottom pocket. I can quickly reach behind me, whip out my camera, and be set. So that's pretty much everything on the outside. And on the inside, I keep just about everything inside of this uh, like waterproof bag. Keeps all my stuff dry. So first here we have my Diddy bag or all of the small things. It's got all my electronics in it and foot care and teeth care and all that good stuff. So I have a dual port wall charger made by Aki. I have a dual battery camera battery charger, which is something new. So being able to charge up two batteries at once, very important for me. That said, I do have two spare camera batteries. I can just have both of those charging on my little battery pack while I'm eating a meal at some restaurant in town. I have a spare memory card. You know, I, I wanna be able to film as much as I want to film absolutely everything and then be able to uh, share the best possible video with you after the fact. Now I have two charging cables. The reason I have this super long uh, cable for my phone is that generally when I'm charging my phone, <laughs> I'm also wanting to use it. I do not wanna have this tiny little cable and be like scrunched up against the outlet. I'm using this uh, Rav Power 20,000 milliamp hour external battery. It can recharge my phone something like eight times over, or of course I can use it to charge my camera batteries. So instead of a headlamp, I use this little tiny flashlight. I carry one spare battery for it. I like the handheld flashlights better. Well, first, because if I want it, I can attach it to my hat, you know, and it can become a headlamp. Most of the time I just hold it at my side. And what happens is it elongates shadows, shadows of rocks or shadows of obstacles. Whereas when you have a light that's pointing straight down from your head, those shadows become really flat. So this actually helps me in like more technical terrain when walking at night. Now travel toothpaste and travel bamboo toothbrush. I have some tiny, tiny little titanium scissors and some Luco tape or blister care. I at least like to start out with some Luco tape, and then later on, if I'm not really using it, I can always just get rid of it. I have some Advil. Now, I don't really take this too often, but I also don't really want to hike without it. I have a small microfiber cloth for my camera lens, and uh, this is where my wallet's gonna go. I just carry my identification card, my debit card, credit card, and some cash. And of course, a giant gallon Ziploc.
Uh, the only other thing that isn't really mentioned here is the camera itself, and this is the Panasonic Lumix G7. I think as nice cameras go, it's actually pretty cheap, or maybe one of the cheapest ones for the quality that you're going to get. So that was very appealing to me. And then I've also attached a, uh, a Rode video microphone to it. So next up is something new. This is the uh, Peloton 97. It is a fleece sweater. Definitely did not want to jump on the Melanzana train, so I did a lot of research, and this is what I wound up with. It's got a hood. It's got some little thumb holes. So five and a half ounces compared to the Melanzana 12 ounces. And really, a fleece is a fleece. They're both pretty much going to do the exact same thing. This is just enough. You know, for temperatures down into like the 40s, maybe when I'm walking in the mornings or when I'm walking in the evenings and when I'm sleeping. Now, I also have my rain jacket. It is just a super cheap Frog Togs rain jacket. You can buy them at Walmart. No, they're not at all durable. It is the only rain jacket I've ever had that actually keeps me dry. <laughs> So I have my tarp. It's just a Z-Pack 7x9 uh, Dyneema composite fabric tarp or Cuban fiber. 7x9 is the perfect size for me. I used to use a poncho tarp that was a lot smaller and although it worked, it just wasn't as comfortable and it was a lot more risky. So this one absolutely keeps me dry. I'm very happy with it. Now my food bag, I still use just this odor-proof sack. There is actually a section of the trail where we are required to have uh, bear canisters, so we're just gonna rent them from Olympic National Park when we get there. A polycro ground cloth for my tarp. I'm going back to Njinji socks, or those silly little toe socks. I used to wear these a lot, and I thought they were great to kind of keep blisters off of the insides of my toes. I of course have my wind pants by Mont Bell. Uh, they are so light that it's almost silly not to bring them on just about any trip ever. They keep bugs off my legs. They add maybe an extra five or so degrees warmth to my lower body. And they dry super fast in the rain. So I'm using the Mountain Laurel Designs FKT quilt. It's probably good down to like 40 degrees or something. Uh, so I'm pretty confident with it. I'm pretty happy with it. Is it a really minimal quilt? It's a super minimal quilt. Is it the warmest quilt out there? No. And of course, my little sleeping pad. Again, I know a lot of people look at this like it's crazy, but it is something that I'm happy with. Those that want to try it will, and those that don't, that's cool. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. That's everything. This is subject to change. That's partly why I wanted to make this video before I left, so that when I come back, I can talk about what worked and what didn't. Although I'm very comfortable with this gear, I've hiked with this gear for a long time, there is no perfect kit among every trail and among every season. So this is just personally what I see fit for the conditions ahead and the task ahead. So you may have noticed my shirt has a ton of hiking gear on it. And this is actually hand drawn by me, designed by me. And uh, if you would like one, you can actually find them at jupiterhikes.com. I'll leave a link in the video description. Green to blue to red to pink to... Anyway, if you would like a closer up look at the shirt, check out the link in the description and thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll come back from this trip with some great stories of either how this gear absolutely failed me or how it was great. Mm -hmm.